This is a calorimetry problem, and it asks how much water at 20 degrees Celsius must come to thermal equilibrium with a 5 kilogram copper block at 100 degrees Celsius in order to lower the block's temperature to 35 degrees Celsius. So I'll start with the diagram. We have a container of water and a copper block. It is going to leave the copper and go into the water. We have two substances, water and copper. And so we want to keep organized. That's really the key to these problems. Write down what you know about the, the water, write down what you know about the copper, and keep them separate. So we know the mass, specific heat capacity, and temperature change of all the objects. And that's what we'll write down for our givens. For the water, we're trying to find the mass of the water. Ask how much water. Specific heat capacity is something we have to look up. So this, this is water. We look up specific heat capacity of water, and we find that it's 4,186 joules per kilogram times degrees Celsius. For the temperature change, everything always reaches the same final temperature. We say that everything comes into thermal equilibrium. So the water starts at 20, and it comes to a final temperature of 35. So it has increased, meaning positive, 15 degrees Celsius. The copper's mass is 5 kilograms. We look up specific heat capacity of copper, and we see that it's 387 joules per kilogram times degrees Celsius. And the copper starts at 100. And again, everything comes to the same final temperature, 35. So it has gone down, it's negative, gone down 65 degrees Celsius. So we have our givens, and what we need to find Whenever we have a heat transfer, we always start with the same equation. The amount of heat that has gone into the one substance is equal to the amount of heat that has come out of the other. But that's not exactly equal here because when heat enters, it is positive, and when heat exits, it is negative. So they're equal but opposite. So our equation is Qn equals minus Qout. We know that heat has entered the water because the water has warmed up. So whichever substance gets hotter, heat is entered. And in this case, whatever substance gets colder, when the temperature goes down, heat has exited that substance. Now for each object, we're going to replace it with mc delta t. And that's why we are writing our givens as such. Our formula is q equals mc delta t for a temperature change. And so we have mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change for the water is equal to minus the mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change for the copper. And then we solve for the mass then we get 2 kilograms. So this is the amount of water necessary if the final temperature is going to be 35 degrees for the copper. Now the only way that these problems with calorimetry could possibly be different is if we have more than two substances. So if we have three substances, we'd have to first figure out is heat entering that third substance or exiting that third substance. If it's entering the third substance, we add its mc delta t on this side. So again, we just add another mc delta t. If it's exiting, we just again add another mc delta t on this side. So again, um, the only difference is if we have more than one, more than two substances, we just add more mc delta t's to each side. In this case, we only have two, so we just have one of each. 